Hi there, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm really, really excited to share with you my first Kipling bag. This is the Kipling Alber 3-in-1 mini convertible backpack. That's a mouthful, but I am recently getting into the brand Kipling. I am so excited. I've had people comment on videos here and there telling me about Kipling. They're like, I think you'd be really interested in Kipling. You should look into it. Check out this bag. Check out that bag. And I, I did back then, but I didn't jump right into the brand because y'all know how crazy I am with I am with Vera and how I've, you know, dipped into the lug world and the Stephanie Dawn world. And I just felt like I needed to calm down for a little bit. So that's what I've been doing. I've been trying to stay calm, trying not to buy anything. And then this little guy popped up on my YouTube feed, Natalie K. She did a video on this exact bag in this pattern, which I think is called Floral Rush, if I remember correctly. And I fell in love with it. And I started doing research. I started looking for this bag. It was a hunt to find this exact bag because it is retired. And it was a very popular style from what I'm reading and seeing reviews on. I finally found one, purchased it, and I've been using it for about a day now and I'm already quite obsessed with it. And so here I am, I'm in the Kipling world and I am very super excited to be sharing this bag with you today. I did bring out my Vera Bradley mini backpack uh, to do a quick comparison at the end but I'm so excited to do a what's in my bag on the Kipling Albert. Okay, I did forget one little thing, and that is, I think all Kipling bags come with um, a monkey keychain. I think they're different. I think the older ones come with these uh, fuzzy monkey charms. Mine came with this uh, rubber, rubberized monkey charm, which is cute. But you all know I'm not really a bag charm person per se. So, and this is really lightweight. It's not heavy and it's not too big, but I did take it off just for the time being. Especially, I already have my hand sanitizer clipped to the outside and I, I just didn't want too much going on right now with this bag. So I just wanted to keep it nice and simple. Let's talk a little bit about this bag before I jump inside of it. There is a newer version of the Albert mini backpack out there. In fact, I have done so much research in the Kipling world this past week. I've learned there are so many versions of like different styles. Like there's ver different versions of this style. There's different versions of many different styles that have, you know, they've just evolved. Kind of like Vera does, you know, Vera has some tried and true styles that they've been cranking out for years and years that have the same name, same general shape and size and configuration, but they've tweaked things over the years. Kipling, I'm starting to learn, has done the same thing. And this is one of the styles where I was like, I could go on Amazon right now and buy the newest version, but I wanted to hunt for the old version and here's why. The old version has a couple or at least three features that I really like that I noticed the newer version didn't seem to have. One of those features is this little bonus pocket on the outside. The new version does not have that. It's just this pocket and this one. Another feature that this had that the new one doesn't is it's got this, I don't know if this is real leather or if it's fake leather, but it is very, very soft. This um, pleather or leather piece of fabric that's sewn to the top handle, which makes it very comfortable, very soft, very pliable, and also reinforces this like webbed cotton. I'm not sure, I've, I've seen lots of people call this webbed cotton in their videos. So that's what I'm, that's what I'm gonna call it for right now. And it's the same material as the straps, which is super, super, super soft, by the way, super soft. So those are two features that this one had that the old one didn't. I think there was one more feature that I, I really liked about this one that the newest one doesn't have. And I can't think of it right now, but if I think of it, I'll talk about it later. Anyway, I was just really, really psyched to find it in this pattern. And apparently there are a lot of the old style Kipling Albers in so many different cool colors and patterns that I've seen on like Google, but I can't find the actual bags and where to buy them because it is an older style. and 
I think it was very popular in its heyday and so now they're hard to find. Anyway, I feel very fortunate to find this and um, again, I watched Natalie Kay's video on this exact bag. I'm going to link it down below. She said in her video, do not give up hope if you're hunting for this style because they are out there. You just gotta, just gotta look. That's how I found this beauty. Okay, let's jump right in. So for the material of this bag, it is water resistant, which is amazing. To describe this is something I've struggled with because at first I wanted to say it was comparable to Vera Bradley's Lighten Up. And then I was like, is it more comparable to Vera Bradley's Reactive, which is a little less stiff than the Lighten Up? It's its own thing. I really, really tried to find something comparable to compare it to, but it really is its own thing because it's not as, um, it's not as slouchy as the Reactive, but it's not as stiff as the Vera Bradley Lighten Up. It's somewhere in between, again, its own thing. It's not anything like Lug's material. Lug is, um, at least Lug's signature main material. This has a little more texture than that. But again, it's it's not rough, it's not too stiff, but it's not as slouchy as the reactive, if that makes any sense. At least for my Vera people who, you know, know those differences between those materials, it, this is something on its own, in my opinion. And I think Kip, Kipling does have different fabrications. I've seen they've ha they have like a metallic fabrication, they have like a semi-metallic fabrication, and then they've got this. And again, I'm still learning, so I don't know what else they have out there, but this is amazing. I love, I love the makeup of this because again, not too slouchy, not too stiff, somewhere in between. It's great. Another thing that people were raving about in every single Kipling video I've watched, people rave about the zippers because they are so smooth. So you'll see they're like a chunky style zipper Again, I'm going back to my Vera Bradley world. If you think of the reactive, it looks very similar to the reactive zippers, but these are so buttery smooth. I mean, they're quite amazing and work really, really well. Another thing I really like about this version of the Alber, I just thought of this. I don't know that the new version has these zippers, but you'll see that they're like this, you know, brushed metallic type looking zipper. And then this is like really tough rubber, like it's not flexible. It's it, like I could tell it's like rubbery, like rubberized plastic, but it's very strong. And it is the Kipling logo. And then there's a star in the middle. So these are very substantial. I feel like they're not going to break. They're not going to bust. They're not going to tear. And I like that there's no paint on the zipper itself because nothing is going to peel, you know, Sometimes on some of my bags that have paint on the zippers, they peel over time after years and years of use. These are not, that's not gonna happen because these are that brushed metallic. I also kind of like their logo. I mean, it is very rubberized, like rubberized material. If you have a pair of Converse, like an older pair of Converse, um, the Converse logo is also round and rubberized on some shoes. It's kind of like that, but it is smaller. I really like it because it's understated and it's color matching so it doesn't stick out too much. So I like that. But let's just jump into the bag now that we've talked about some of the exterior features. So again, we've got this nice snap, magnetic snap button pocket here. And you'll see that this pocket up here has its own gusset. Whereas this smaller pocket kind of shares space a little bit and bulks out just a little bit, but that doesn't bother me any. And in this pocket, I've got my mask in there. And I also have my chapstick down in there. So that is the perfect pocket for those two things. And then it just snaps closed. In the next pocket, you do have one zipper pull and it goes right around just like that. And in here is perfect for my sunglasses. At first, I did have my um, sunglasses case inside the main interior, but I'm like, you know, let me just try and see if my sunglasses fit in this pocket, and they did. So that's where I'm gonna keep them. Also in this pocket is my pepper spray. So it is perfect for those two items, and you'll see that I have more room in that middle. And look, it's got, a, this pocket has its own gusset. Sorry about my hand sanitizer. Okay. 
So you'll see that this pocket has got its own gusset. So I can definitely squeeze more things in there if I wanted to, especially vertical things. I think it'd fit in there really well. This also has a D-ring on the outside, which is where the monkey was hanging. And you'll see the monkey is the same color, just about the same color as the background of this bag. And I'd say the background of this bag is like a navy gray mix, the background color. But instead, of, I used the D-ring to hang my hand sanitizer from. So that's where that's chilling right now. And then the main interior has got one zipper. But since this is a small bag, I think one zipper is perfect. And it goes down to right about there. And then look at all my stuff inside. It's so cute. So the configuration on the inside, we have got a big slip pocket on one side here. And I'll show you my phone, which is the iPhone 11. Fits perfectly in this pocket. So I just left that open because I want to use that for my phone in case I do want to put my phone on the inside of the bag. So that's what that looks like there. For now, I'll take it out. And then in the back, which we'll, which we'll get to eventually, there is a full zipper pocket back there that goes all the way to the bottom. So let me show you once more before I start taking stuff out, just so you can get a look of everything I've got in the bag. I was able to fit all of my essentials in here. I didn't have to make any major compromises at all. The only thing I did change out is instead of my small essentials, Stephanie Dawn case, which did fit in here, but I just wanted it to be a little less, because the Stephanie Dawn does get a little thick and I had it packed full of stuff. I decided to switch that out with my Heirloom Paisley coin purse, which is a little bit thinner and smaller. And again, I still have room with the Stephanie Dawn, but I decided to just pare it down in terms of pouch size and that pouch still fits everything that I needed to fit. Okay, so let's get into this. So my wallet is the Lighten Up Zip ID and Lanyard Combo. This is in Cut Vines Cool, I think. I really like that there's like a heart, kind of a in unintentional heart on that side. And I love the background color of this. Very, very pretty. I was watching Liz's video. She had um, a mini go-ahead convertible crossbody in this pattern, I think it was. And when I first saw this pattern in person, I was like, it's cute, but nah, you know, I didn't get anything in it. But then I saw her video and I, you know, she demonstrated it really well. And um, so I picked this up online. So that's my wallet. And then let me try to get the bag in the frame so you can see me take out these, these things. Lotion. I also have my tissue pouch, and this has tissues in it, but in the zipper compartment, I've got scissors, medicine, band-aids, cough drops, things of that nature in there. Here is the Heirloom Paisley coin purse I was talking about. And see, it's just a little bit more of a slimmer profile, whereas the Stephanie Dawn case is like more like this in size. And so I just switched over to this. This has just got my scrunchie, my um, Excedrin and Advil, and it's also got my peppermint oil for migraines, which I've been, I usually don't carry that in my bags. I've been carrying it in every single bag because sometimes when I get really bad migraines and I need quick relief, I just roll out on my head and it takes the pain away for like 30 minutes at least. Um, so that's just been great to have in my bags. In the back here, standing up tall, I've got my wet wipes pouch and my Vines Floral mini pencil pouch. I also have some sunscreen. This was just chilling inside of the bag. And I also have got my Cinda B tech case. This has got my iPhone charger and charging cords inside. I've got some receipts, a lot of receipts. And I've got my AirPods. Okay, this is exciting for me. This thing has a key leash on the inside. All of my other bags that have key leashes, I just have never used them. I never really liked them. This one, I don't know why, but I like this one. It's just, it's really convenient because I just keep, I have all the stuff inside and then I keep this on the top. And when I do need to get my keys, I can just grab it. I can have it hang outside of the bag briefly like this. And then I can just throw it back in the bag. And I still feel like my keys aren't getting crushed by everything in the bag. 
I think that's because they attached it up here at the top. Some key leashes I've seen in other bag brands, they attach it towards the bottom and then all your stuff kind of covers it and makes it a little bit harder to find the key leash and then pull up the keys. This is attached at the top. So even if I decided to keep that at the bottom, I can still easily pull this up like that and pull my keys out. I am telling you, I never use key leashes inside of any of my other bags, but this is the one bag where I was excited to use this just because of the way it's constructed and where it's placed in the bag. So for the last pocket, which is the zipper pocket, let me fold this real quick just so you can see. And then there's the Kipling tag with their uh, slogan, live light. And even the zipper pull, the, the smaller zipper pull is kind of unique. It says Kipling and then has their little star emblem on it. Also that same brush metallic. And I actually have a lot in the zipper pocket. Um, I've got two feminine products, first of all, in there. I won't necessarily pull those out. And I'll try to keep this covered, but this is my um, COVID vaccination card. I'm officially fully vaccinated, yay. So that is in there along with those feminine products. And there's actually room to spare in there. I had the COVID-19 vaccination, vaccination card on a lanyard, but I took it off because I was actually using this. I switched out this lanyard and put this lanyard on it. And then I, I needed the lanyard for my zip ID. So I took it off real quick and put it on my zip ID. So that is what's in that pocket back there. And then just to give you another look at that front slip pocket is, is a full slip pocket. It's pretty large. So bear with me real quick while I put everything back. Let me just give you a, a quick snapshot there to the inside. So I'm going to go ahead and put everything back real quick. Just like so I'd like to give you guys a snapshot of what everything looks like inside the bag. Because I know when I'm... When I'm watching other people's videos, I really like to see how they pack the inside of their bags with their different things because that just gives me an idea of what I have and, you know, how I can pack it, if that makes any sense. So I'm just going to give you another quick look at that. Get the lotion back in there and the AirPods. And just for fun, let me put the phone back in its pocket. And boom, there's everything. And so see how the keys are hanging out? Watch what I do with the keys. I just take this little key, key leash, key lanyard, whatever it's called. Of course, when I tip the bag over, it's going to fall out. I just, see how I just put it on the top there? And see how the key leash, it's not being crushed by anything because it's attached right there on the side. So it is always at the top. It's never... Unless I intentionally put my pouches on top of the keys, still, it's very visible. And I can just get to it real quick. I can move them out of the way in case I need to grab other pouches. It's not getting in the way of my wallet or anything else. So there's a better view. There you go. That's everything. I just really like this small bag. And we haven't even gotten to the, one of the most exciting parts of the bag which is the fact that this is a convertible bag. They call it the three-in-one convertible bag because there are technically three different ways you can wear it. So right now I have it set to a mini backpack style. As you can see, they're giving you four D-rings on this bag, two different straps for a backpack, but you can also take off one strap and hook the strap to be a crossbody or shoulder bag, or you can even do a cross sling here. So we're going to go through the different configurations of this bag. So let me put up my not so hair real quick so my hair doesn't get constantly caught in the straps because that's just annoying. <laughs> but I have it set to the shortest length on both straps so you'll see they are adjustable and here's what the buckles look like. You've got the Kipling logo emblem and it's that again that nice brush metallic there. So I'm going to show you what the bag looks like on me. So I did use this bag today on a long walk and it was absolutely fabulous and very comfortable. So this is what it looks like with one strap, which I like to one strap my backpack sometimes. 
And this is, let's see how I can get in the frame here. This is what it looks like with the two straps. Hope I'm in the frame. I think I'm in the frame. Okay. And that's what it looks like with two straps. Here's like a side view of what it looks like. It is the perfect size. And at the shortest length here for the backpack mode, it sits right above, right in the curvature of my back, which is perfect. Okay, so now that we did that mode, let's do shoulder bag. So for shoulder bag, I'm gonna take off this strap here. So there's that extra strap. And what I would do, I would probably, you know, actually I would take this, roll this up and put it in that nice little space right in there when I'm not using this. That way I have it just in case I need to do a quick mini backpack switch. But we're gonna take this strap right here and we're gonna cross it over to the top. And I should mention that these are swivel straps, which are my favorite. So they, see how they swivel here? So they're not ever going to get tangled in themselves. Okay, so this is the shoulder bag setting. So just so you can get an idea of the drop here, this is what it's gonna look like if you're wearing it as a shoulder bag. So this is what it looks like on me. It falls right on top of my hip, the top piece of my hip here. So that's what it looks like as a shoulder bag. It's so cute, I love it, so, so cute. And then, I guess the third way technically to them is, so we've got the mini backpack, that's one, shoulder bag is two, Third option is the crossbody option, which if you go to the Kipling Instagram pages, it seems like everybody, everybody and their brother has one of these, and everybody is wearing it as a crossbody. I've seen lots of like people wearing it as a mini backpack too, but I've seen lots of people wearing it as a crossbody bag, which I think is so cool to have that functionality. And I will admit, there are points where I, and I love this bag, you guys know how much I love this, there are points of time where I was like, I kind of wish I could make this a crossbody. Not that I don't like carrying it as a mini backpack, but there are times where I need a crossbody and I want it to be hands-free, but I still want it to be close to me. Well, there you go. You get that with this bag. So there's what it looks like if you pull it around in the front. It does have a little bit of bulk to it, but I do have a ton of stuff in there, as you saw. And this is what it looks like on the side. Now there's something else I wanted to try and it wasn't advertised at all like this, but this is just something I'm gonna try right here, right now. Okay, so I have the top clipped and the bottom clipped. I just wanna see what it kinda looks like. So, okay, it's gonna swing more because it wants to do that. So maybe that's, that's probably why they didn't advertise it like that. Okay, just wanted to try and see what it would look like like that. I'm gonna go ahead and put it, put it back there. Yes, I really, really like that. And I could even make it shorter to just go right in the, the curvature of my my waist there. Let's let's see what that might look like. Let's see if I can find the thing. Okay. Let's shorten it real quick. And then Okay, my hair is so big right now, I can't even get it over my hair. Okay, so that's what it looks like a little bit higher on my body as a crossbody. And right now, it's even though it is really full, it's not super heavy, but it is really full. But, I mean, besides my hand sanitizer, which is flying everywhere from movement, this is staying on really well. Let me just get you a little closer so you can see what it looks like. That's kind of a nice day pack. I guess you could try to wear it around your waist, but to me, this is way too thick to like have it attached around your waist as a belt bag. Belt bags really aren't my thing anyway, so I wouldn't do that. But Kipling does have a variety, from what I've seen, they have a variety of bags that are intentionally built to be belt bags. So um, I'd probably look at one of those before making this a makeshift belt bag. But this is probably the closest I would the closest I would get to something like that. Even though it's not going around my waist, 
I think it's nice and high on my body. If I want, I can throw it to the back. But that is what that looks like. So I will go ahead and take this off. And another way you can wear it too, which I've seen a couple people do this, they take the straps off all together and just carry it like this. Because you've got a really robust, really robust handle with this one. So you can just grab it and go. You can take off the, those completely. The D-rings are very small and they don't, they don't infringe. Also the fabric, the fabric that the D-rings are, um, attached to are really robust. And look, I just noticed this. They added a piece of fabric so you can tuck the D-ring inside. If you're using this, I assume if you're using this as a crossbody and you don't want those D-rings at the bottom to stick out, they sewed a piece of almost triangular fabric so you can tuck the D-rings inside. So that is really cool. I love this little bag, it's so cute. Um, but yeah, this, this material, which is the same material as the straps here, I'll get you in there. It reminds me very much of the, the VBU material strap, but this is a lot softer. And, um, it might be because the webbing is a little bit larger instead of like a tighter webbing. Again, I, I've heard people call this webbed cotton. I don't know for sure. It definitely feels softer than typical canvas type material. So, uh, that's what I'm going with. But yeah, that is my review and what's in my bag on the Kipling Albert 3-in-1 mini convertible backpack. There's a look at the base there. There's a nice look at the, um, that compartment right there. But again, I went for this one because I love this print and I love this extra addition of a pocket. The more pockets to me, the better. This is another place where I can organize smaller things. And then I'm still able to carry a myriad of pouches in here. So I'm just very, very happy with this bag. And this is gonna be my bag for the foreseeable future. I There are a lot of other Kipling bags that I wanna buy and try, especially the Kipling Defia, which seems like a super popular Kipling. Um, lots of videos on the Kipling Defia. I think that will probably be my next one, but it's gonna be a long time before I get it because your girl is on a legit buying freeze, okay? So, um, if you don't see a, uh, a variety of videos from me in a while, that is why. You, you might see some stuff that I already have and you might see some requested videos, but um, no new stuff for a while. So anyway, that is my review and lots of my bag on the Kipling Albert. Thank you so much for watching. If you've got questions for me or suggestions on other Kipling items to try someday in the future, I'd love to hear them. Thanks for watching. Bye. Okay, I ended my last video and I forgot to do the comparison to the um, Vera Bradley mini backpack by Mind Spaced Out. So here is that quick comparison between the Vera Bradley mini backpack, and this is in berry red, and here is the Kipling Albert. So you can kind of get an idea. The mini backpack is much bigger than the Kipling Albert. You'll see that both height. Let's take this. Let's take this off here so you can get a better better look. I don't know if I'm going to edit this into the video I just did on this bag or I might just post a separate video, but here is here's the comparison between the two. So you can see the width or the depth rather is very similar between the two. This one's got more height and it's got more width on it than the Kipling Albert. So I just wanted to, to show that real quick because I was a, a, a bum and I forgot to <laughs> include it in my last video. Sorry about that. But there are those two bags in comparison to my head. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. Sorry about that. I will see you later. Bye.